Hey everyone, it's John and today we're going to continue on the CCMP based switched video series. So if you recall from the previous video, we just looked at Backbone Fast and in this video, what I want to do is look at the mechanisms behind Rapid Span Entry and just to illustrate just how and why it is an improvement over both Uplink Fast and Backbone Fast, which are designed for common span entry, i.e. 802.1D. So anyway, Let's just have a quick recap on Uplink Fast just before we continue on. So if you recall briefly from the last video, um, if we had a root bridge here, okay, and a root port here and a blocked port here, in the case of an indirect, fail a indirect failure from the point of view of Switch 3, which would be this link here, if this link went down, which would happen to be the root port for this switch, this switch would start sending BPDUs down, which were inferior, and because we had um, Backbone Fast configured, that would then trigger us to ignore the 20 second max age timer, and it would allow us to immediately transition to listening for 15 seconds, and then learning for 15 seconds but okay we're not spending 50 seconds waiting on convergence but we're still waiting on 30 seconds that's a long time still in a modern network that is just quite frankly too long so how could we chop this down even further well the way we do that is by using a uh, rapid span entry i'm going to show you what it actually does Effectively, in the scenario that we have here, let's just have the exact same scenario. The root bridge is here, okay? And this is a root port here. This is a root port. This is a root port. This is blocked, and this is blocked. Now, in the event that this link happened to go down, this broke, what would happen would be we would send out, this switch would send out inferior BPDUs because it would assume it's the root because it can't contact the root but the BPDUs would not ha would have a higher priority than that of switch 1 here so it's going to have an inferior BPDU going to hit this block port now in the case of Backbone Fast in this scenario what we would do would be to ignore the max age timer of 20 seconds and immediately transition to listening and then learning and then forward them okay so that's 30 seconds in the case of spanning tree we cut it all out spanning tree cuts all the chaff away it basically says if you receive that inferior bpdu something's happened to that switch it's basically lost its connection to the root bridge therefore we can immediately transition to forward and without the risk of a loop because that link that redundant link is effectively down it's not going to be causing any kind of loops so in the case of rapid spanning tree What we're doing is we're saying max h don't need you we're saying listening don't need you we're saying learning don't need you and let's immediately go towards forwarding so that means we'll cut out 20 seconds We'll cut out 50 se 15 seconds, sorry, and another 15 seconds. So in total, we're cutting out a whopping 50 seconds completely. So we're getting that forwarding, and I'm just going to show you that just now. So, um, now this is the way of this is the behavior of rapid span entry in the 802.1W standard. But in the case of this, I'm using Cisco, so we're using. A rapid per VLAN span entry. It's the same kind of algorithm, but it allows us to use multiple VLANs and whatnot and load balance and stuff like that. So don't get too hung up in this. It's basically where this is span and rapid span entry we're using, even though it's rapid PVSD. So let's change all these to rapid PVSD. And we'll do enable oh. span entry mode rapid PVSD. Enable span tree mode rapid PVSD. Let's 
Spanning Tree Mode, Rapid PVSD. Okay, look, so that's that done. And Spanning Tree uh, VLAN 1 Priority 8192 to make sure that's the root. Okay, so we'll do a show spanning tree, and this bridge is the root. Okay, so this is the root, therefore, this link's going to be the root bridge. Uh, I'll just highlight that. Okay, so that's the root bridge, gig zero zero. That's the one we're going to shut down, and what I'm going to do is have. Um, I'll get too many of these over. Okay, so what we're going to do, like I say, is go on to switch 2 and switch 3. So we'll get switch 3 here and let's open up switch 2. So we'll get switch 3 ready just to do a show spanning tree. And like I say, as you can see right now, it's in blocking stage. But when we go to gig at zero, 0, that's, remember, that's the link to the root bridge, this one here. We're going to shut that down, and what's going to happen is this switch is going to assume it's the root, send out an inferior BPDU. This is going to receive it on a block port, assume something is wrong, and straight away transition to forwarding. Okay? This switch will immediately get the information from the real root bridge coming through this link and realise, hey, I'm not the root, find the root port, and we'll use this root port to get to the root bridge. So let's have a look. And that's switch three. And I'm going to shut this down. That's a shut down. Show span entry. And immediately this has went from blocking status as forwarding. Okay. And like I say, straight away up here, the same thing would have happened immediately here. Calculating a root port via gig02. So that's that. That's what happens with rapid span and treat. It cuts both of them out. Now there's one more thing which I want to do. I'm going to quickly pause the video and I'm going to introduce a new switch into the topology. Okay, so I've reintroduced a new switch into the topology, but I've not yet made it the root bridge, I've not changed the priority such that it's the best uh, option and it's not the root bridge, the root bridge is still up here. So like I said, in the previous video we just discussed what happens when a inferior BPDU comes in on a port on a switch configured for rapid span entry. Now what I want to do in this video is to look at what happens when a superior one comes in. So if you recall from the previous video, what we had was we had a blocking port here and a blocking port here. Oh no, sorry, my fault, that's incorrect. We had a blocking port here and a blocking port here. And this is the root bridge, okay? Because that was actually a root port and this is a root port, as was this. Okay, so we had a blocking port here and a blocking port here. Now what I'm going to do is... In this case, we're going to change the priority of this to be the lowest priority. Therefore, it's going to become the root bridge. Now, what's going to happen is, when it does that, it's going to send a BPDU with the new lower priority. This switch, because it's configured for rapid span entry, is immediately going to see that as a lower priority and say, listen, that's a better priority than which I've got so far. So rather than have the root bridge go up to here to this switch, I want to go to you because you've got a lower priority. So that's what it does. It immediately forwards in this direction. And this is the interesting part. What it does, it also immediately, it basically shuts down all the ports connected to it. It puts them into blocking stage, should I say, and that's shut them down into blocking stage. And then what it does, it sends out a proposal, it's called. Okay. Basically, in this proposal, it says, I think I've found a new root bridge. The priority is this. I think it's better than what you've got just now. Okay? And Switch 2 is going to receive this proposal here and say, do you know what? That actually is a better priority. I like that priority. I'm going to agree to that. And it's going to send an agreement back. And when it sends the agreement back, what it's basically saying is, 
I agree this is the, the new path. I want this, I want to go to this root bridge. So by definition, this is going to become a root port, okay? Because it's going to go to this switch here. Now when it does that agreement, it basically says, listen, this is the path to my root port. You better unblock this link. Because remember when it happened, it should have shut down these, these ports or put them into block them. When the agreement comes back, it says, listen, you're on the path on my root port, unblock that link. So what happens is, span and tree unblocks that link, okay? So we're now following through here. And like I say, the same thing happens through here. We send the proposal up here, proposal. And this switch says, actually, that is a lower priority than me. I am no longer the root bridge. I agree. Sends an agreement. I want to go through there. So the same thing happens. This becomes the root port. And immediately, because it says, listen, this is the root port, unblock that link straight away. Okay, so again, rapid span entry unblocks that link. So this is forwarding. This is now a root port, and this is now a root port, okay? And the same process happens, okay? So this switch then puts out saying, what it does is this switch, once it's done its agreement, it blocks its other links, okay? And sends out a proposal. And sends out a proposal, okay? Now, the proposal goes across to this switch here, but here's the interesting part, okay? Now remember what we had, we had this, this is blocking, okay? And it sends it the proposal, and this switch does not accept that proposal because it's already got a root port open here, okay? This is saying, listen, I've found a new root bridge, here's how to get to it, proposal. And this one says, no, listen, I've already accepted a lower cost through here. I'm going through here. So I'm not going to accept your proposal. So effectively, what happens is this part stays in blocking mode. And this is how we're going to prevent all our loops. So this stays in blocking mode. And the same thing happens here. This switch here, when it, when it did its acceptance to this switch here, okay, what it then did, of course, was do the shutdown and the proposals and all that. So... The same thing happened with this switch. It basically shut this down and sent a proposal. This switch says, yeah, that I like that. That's definitely, this switch here does have a low priority in you. I am agreeing to this. And you're the fastest path to me to get to that. I accept it. So you're my, on the path of my root port, unblock that link. So again, what happens is this one unblocks it and this can now flow through here. The same thing happens, of course, with this switch. It shuts down the port immediately upon accepting the proposal and it sends a proposal out of its own to this switch here. And it says, I've found a better BPDU than the initial root bridge. I propose this, but again, this switch does not accept it because it's got a quicker path going through here and it's already accepted that, so it doesn't accept it, so this one stays in the blocked state, okay? So this is basically how it goes round, we, we, and this happens immediately, it's a question of BPDU gets sent out, I agree, block, block, proposal, unblock that, this becomes forwarding, I block, block, proposal, proposal, so on and so forth, and it happens really, really quickly. So this is how span entry or rapid span entry effectively allows itself to quickly put all its all of its ports in a forwarding state without risking causing loops. And this is why it's such an improvement over uplink fast and backbone fast. So what I'm going to do is just do that right now. I'm going to change the priority and we're going to see how it works. And we're going to do conf t span entry. And we'll do VLAN 1, because it's all in VLAN 1 just now. And we'll make the priority 4096. And we'll do a show span. And we'll see this bridge is now the root. 
And like I say, switch four. It's going to have gig zero zero. This one here will be the root port. Show span. See that? Gig zero zero is the root port. And switch two. And like I say, switch two is gig zero zero is going to be blocking, and gig zero one will be root port. This will be root port here. And this will be blocking because this switch here will have a better route via here, so it will not accept the path over here. So this will just keep this will not be unblocked. So we'll do a show span. Oh wait, there now. Do you know what? I forgot to shut. Let me just bring that up. I've still left that interface shut down. The gig zero zero when I did the initial proposal. So let's do a show span. Okay, so there it's there, gig zero zero is in blocking state. And gig zero one, like I say, is the root. And switch one. Again, we're going to see gig zero two is the root port, show span, or should be designated. Yep, root here, designated. And like I say, Switch 3, gig zero 01 should be root port, and gig zero 02 should still be blocking because again, once it sends a proposal out here, this switch 2 won't accept that proposal because it's got a better one via here. So this will just be kept unblocked, or rather, rather just be kept blocked, should I say. Um, okay, so let's do a show span. Gig zero 01 root we're expecting. Gig zero 01 is the root, and gig zero 02 is in blocking state. So that's that. So like I say, that's pretty much the mechanisms about how rapid span entry allows itself to converge rapidly as the name suggests and ensure that it does keep a loop free layer two topology. So that's the end of the video. Um, I'll try and get another one out pretty soon and I'll see you guys soon. So thanks very much. Bye bye.